Hey everybody, welcome back to Book of Star. Do you know how great it feels to finally say that? So last year I was shooting a lot of videos, posting it on my website, posting it on my YouTube, and then my computer died in July and I was so devastated. <laughs> I was already having a tough year, so when my computer died, it halted a lot of my production, um, but then it did propel me into creating other videos, which I'm pretty excited about. So today I wanna talk about sex. You heard me, S-E-X, sex. Does that make you uncomfortable? <laughs> <laughs> so last year God healed me from sexual trauma and I shared a video about that and so today I want to talk about why I gave up masturbating so I've been abstinent now for let's say officially I guess five years now officially five years it has not been easy um, a lot of it wasn't easy for me because of the sexual trauma that I experienced so therefore I wasn't craving sex you know I wasn't really getting horny I actually detested it but I won't go into details now because I already shot that video. But I will say that even though I didn't care for sex and I um, was not looking forward to sex when I got married, what I was looking forward to was masturbating. I know, it's crazy. Um, it's even crazier because it's not like I actually enjoyed masturbating, but I was looking forward to it. So my journey really began I don't remember what year it was, but I was with my ex-boyfriend and I had said to God, you know what, this is it. I'm just gonna make sure I'm abstaining and I'm gonna keep walking um, in this direction. And I don't even think I asked God for his help because at that time I was so good at like, if I'm not gonna have sex, I'm just gonna cut it right off. I know it sounds crazy, but I said, I'm gonna stop having sex and I did that. But the very day that I made that decision, my ex bought me a vibrator. And I thought, oh, well, how can I turn down this gift, you know? So I thought maybe I won't use it. I use it a lot. <laughs> but then um, maybe a couple of years later after we broke up, I put the vibrator away and I was like, you know what? I'll just save it for marriage because um, then I won't feel so guilty when I'm doing it anyway. And I remember going to my friend's church. Um, we were at a woman's conference. I remember worshiping God. I fully surrendered to him. I had my hands up like, Lord, Lord, anything you want, tell me whatever you want me to do, God, I will do it. And I heard the Lord say to me, throw out your vibrator. I was like, what? <laughs> I looked around the room so fast and I was like, um, who said that? So I'm looking to see, but no one's paying me any attention. So I'm just like, okay. And I throw my hands back up and I'm like, Lord, I love you so much. You are worthy of everything. Anything you want me to do, I will do it. And I heard God say again, throw out your vibrator. And I was like, what? <laughs> I mean, it was so funny, but at the same time, um, I didn't understand why he wanted me to do it, but I had gotten to a space in my walk with God that I was like, you know what, whatever you want, that's what I'm gonna do. So when I got home that day, I did throw out my vibrator and um, I was good. I was good until about summer 2018 where I went to Mexico and I was hanging out with my friend and uh, with me and my girlfriend, we went to Mexico and we got really, really drunk <laughs> off of Henny shots on our last day. And I remember just feeling so turned on. I was so horny and I really wanted to masturbate. And I said to myself, I'm not gonna do it, I'm not gonna do it. And then I gave in, I just ended up masturbating. And um, when I did it, I didn't realize that an entire door was about to open for the spirit of lust to come in and keep attacking me. And so uh, when I got home from Mexico, I now had this craving that like, I needed to masturbate, I needed to keep doing this. Um, but I wasn't desiring having sex with anyone, I just was desiring masturbating. And it was it was to the point that like, um, I was feeling sick if I didn't do it. And so I would pray to God, actually I don't even think I was praying to God and asking him for help. In my mind I'm like, this is just gonna be a summer of masturbation and that's exactly how it happened. And so um, the spirit of lust didn't leave me um, until the fall. And honestly, the spirit ended up just getting transferred to someone else. That's just really what happened. Um, but I, I remember when the spirit left me, 
I had prayed to God and I said, I never want to go through that again. Like never. I need your help. And so that is something that's so important that when you are choosing to walk in purity, when you're choosing to abstain from sex, you have to ask God to help. Like before I was so arrogant because I'm someone where like, I don't want any addictions to have me. So if I say I'm going to cut something out, I automatically cut it out. But the issue is that, um, this beast was stronger than me. It was stronger than me. And I found myself trying to walk in purity without God. And so I had to ask God to come in and help me. And he did. He really did. Um, the desire didn't come back to want to masturbate again until maybe... Actually, no. Each time it came back, I would ask God to help me. And so the word says that the Lord will always give us a way of escape, right? He doesn't tempt us beyond that we can bear. He will always provide a way of escape. So I remember now, um, as he's walking me through not wanting to masturbate and really just getting it out of my system, what I had to do to control my thoughts was I wasn't listening to um, R&B. And I have a whole playlist. It's called Safe Sex. It's a bunch of sex songs on it. I used to love listening to that. I had to cut that out because um, if it entered in my spirit, then I was going to desire sex. Whenever I was watching movies, I could not watch the sex scenes or I couldn't watch movies that had so much sex in it or any shows like that. So Sex in the City, my favorite show, Bye Bye. I couldn't watch that. When Girlfriends recently came back, I started watching it by season three. I was like, this thing is filled of so much sexual innuendos that I couldn't watch that anymore. Um, sometimes I'll be watching movies and this is me. <laughs> I know, I'm so silly. But I really wanted to take this walk seriously because experiencing the spirit of lust was no joke and I never wanted to experience it again. And so I remember now I put these uh, measures in place and it really did help me. If I started feeling horny, cause like horny, feeling horny is not a sin of course. That is something that God gave us. It's a desire that he gave us. Like we should desire sex, but in the confines of marriage, right? There's a difference between feeling horny and then when the spirit of lust comes upon you, it becomes like this strong, passionate desire that you have to have it, or you need to do it, or you want to do it, and you're gonna do it, and it starts to consume your thoughts. And I didn't want that to happen to me because I knew that once it consumed my thoughts, that it was also going to turn into an action. And I wanted to stop it at the thought level. So I had to ask God to come in and help me. So whenever I did start feeling horny, I did do things um, to help take my mind off of it. I started working out. Um, I would read my word. Um, I would pray. I would go out. I would write like anything to take my mind. I had to transfer the energy um, elsewhere. So anything to take my mind off of it. Um, I avoided sexual conversations and it made me realize how much sex is infused in our culture. Like I knew it before, but when you try to avoid it and avoid the conversations, at least with friends, you realize how much like it's just in our everyday conversation. So that was hard. But about fall 2019, I got to a space that I felt like I was good and um, I had gone through something super traumatic and I remembered that during that time, God had given me comfort during that time. So when uh, one day I was just hanging out on my couch, minding my business, when I felt the spirit of lust come upon me and it was this very strong desire to masturbate. And I remember the cravings so hard that my stomach started hurting. Um, I felt so sick. And this is what used to happen to me in the past where it's like the only thing that will make me feel better is if I masturbated. I know that sounds crazy. I don't know if anyone's ever gone through that, but that's how strong the spirit of lust had me. It, it was like if you were trying to kick the addiction, you would get sick from it. So that's what was happening to me. And so I felt it come upon me and I said to the Lord, you know, I really don't want to masturbate. But I remember when I was going through my trauma, how you comforted me and you came through then. So I'm asking you to come through right now in this moment. And he did. As soon as I prayed that, God said to me, um, start worshiping. And I started to worship. I got up and I started singing worship songs. And when I did, that spirit left so fast. I mean, it flew away. It was gone. And I was so grateful because I felt like I had reached a new level um, with God. Like I went deeper with God, with the Holy Spirit, really, because that's who had come through for me. Like I felt like in that moment, whatever I asked, 
God was going to provide. And so because I asked him for the way out, he gave me the way out and I was obedient and I did it. And when I did it, that spirit left me alone. And so um, I like to say that that's where my story ends, but it's not true. Even fall 2020, it was happening again. I remember feeling so disappointed in God um, that the enemy started to put thoughts in my mind. He started saying things like, well, the Lord didn't come through for you, so you might as well masturbate. Well, you're feeling disappointed. You're feeling unworthy, so you might as well masturbate. And it let me know that um, in my past, I was masturbating whenever I felt like I was bored, whenever I felt disappointed, whenever I felt frustrated. Like that's why I started masturbating. And then um, it opened the door for the spirit of lust to come in. So because um, I was very much aware of it this time around when the enemy tried to get me, I said, you know what, Lord, nothing's going on in my life. I don't see the promises that you promised me, but I must still trust you. I'm gonna still trust you. And I fought hard. I mean, that spirit was no joke. He was entering my dreams. He kept telling me, give in to me, give in to me. I was having all these crazy sexual dreams that I had to wake up and I had to denounce every single one of them um, and come out of agreement with Satan. It was a real battle. And I wanna say that now, I don't think I'm battling the spirit of lust anymore. I'm very grateful for that. And I am still walking in purity. I'm still abstaining. I'm still waiting for marriage. And I had come to a, a place in my life that I am no longer waiting for marriage to masturbate. When God was healing me from sexual trauma last year, I kept asking him, is masturbation a sin? You know, I feel like that's a question that a lot of people um, keep asking. And I recognize that for me, it doesn't matter if it's a sin or not. I'm just choosing not to do it. So I hope that you found this video helpful. I hope that you gained some insight from it. Also, I'd like to hear from you. Have you given up masturbation? Do you even think that masturbating is a sin? You can share your uh, comments below. And if you like this video, be sure to like, share, and comment below and subscribe to my channel.